Hey everyone, this is Julie Olson from That Library Girl. Some people in the group were asking about how to cut out library decor using a Cricut machine. And just as a disclaimer, I'm a very new Cricut user, but I can show you what I know and what I figured out. So let's cut it out. All right, the first thing you're going to do is open up your Cricut design space and you're going to click this green button at the top right that says new project number two you're going to go to upload and number three you're going to find your image you want to make sure that your image is one of these file types and for bulletin board things i usually use png so you're going to drag or drop your files here and that's going to look something like this so number five if i open up my desktop maybe this is the um, image that i want to work with i would probably just drag it over but you could also you know open a folder and click on whatever it is you want and um, pop it in there that way so number six once you've got your image uploaded, it's going to ask some questions. And I usually say that my image is complex because usually they involve lots of different colors and they involve maybe some layers and some fonts and some curves. So I click on complex, apply and continue. Number seven, just to let you know, you'll also see this background remover. And for my bulletin board projects, I usually ignore this. I want the background and I'll show you why in just a minute. So again, apply and continue. Here is my image. I'm going to use the function of print then cut. So I'm going to click it because there might be several different things still on my desktop that I've worked with on the past. So click the shamrock and it knows that's what I'm working with. I'm going to add it to my canvas down here and then I've got it on my canvas and number 10 says you may have to grab it here on the edge with your mouse and move it up a little bit because look here starting out caution i've already got a problem um cricut is going to tell me that my image is too big it's not going to work so i'm going to show you how to fix that in just a little bit i also want to let you know that this is not really what your cricut design space is going to look like i have a pretty big monitor so i did some cutting and pasting really it's going to be much wider than this it's going to be much longer but you're going to be using this over on the right side and you're going to be using this at the bottom on the right side just to give you an idea of where everything is on one screen all right number 11 i like a white border around my bulletin board objects because I usually use dark backgrounds. I usually use black or royal blue or maybe charcoal gray and I need my images to really pop. So I always cut them out by hand and leave a little white image. So of course I did not mean to do that. Let me get back over here. Sorry about that guys. So I'm going to click offset and when I do it's going to show that I need a little border cut as Cricut cuts my image out. I'm also seeing that I've got it too far over, so I'm going to have to scoot, 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 scoot it over a little bit. And um, you can determine the width of your little white border by playing with this. You can toggle it a little bit or just type in what you think. I found that 0 0.25 works for me, but you adjust it as needed and then click apply. And I want this little border to be white. So what I'm going to do is go up to print and cut. And right here, if you noticed on the other screen, it was a little picture of my shamrock. Now I'm going to turn that to white and make a new layer. So in this way, I'm going to have instead of this black layer, which might be really cute if you were using a white or a yellow or a light green background on your bulletin board. But in this case, I just need to switch it for myself. All right, here we go. So if you look very closely, you can see that now I've got that white edge underneath my little shamrock. But see, I've got another problem here. It's saying, yeah, you got a problem. This is not going to work. So my solution is to flatten these two layers together and to do that I'm going to pick a spot down here and I'm going to push my mouse I'm going to drag it up so that both of these images are covered up by the gray square 
and then down here I'm going to click flatten and that's going to make this disappear. One problem fixed. Ta-da! But I still got the other problem that I had in the beginning. So it's telling me this is not going to be supported by Maker. My shamrock is simply too big for it to cut. So I'm going to have to go up here and adjust the size. The image has to be no wider than 6.75 and no taller than 9.25. So that's kind of a bummer and one of the reasons that sometimes I just cut things out by hand because I need things to be big and bold. You can change the page size, but I have played with that and I was not successful yet. Use my growth mindset. Not successful yet. So I'm just going to show you how I did it playing by their rules. So I adjusted my size and that went away and it says okay print then cut all the little caution signs are gone you can see that i've adjusted it and again i have overlapped everything so i can demo but now you're going to go up to this right corner which would actually be way over here and click make it now the fun begins okay over here on the far left side i didn't i've never really had to change any of this yet and um, I print things on eight and a half by 11 on my printer. So make sure that your material size said that mine already did. I don't need the mirror right now because it's going to print for me just fine. So I just clicked continue. You can see that now Cricut has given me two black boxes around my image. These are really important because it's how Cricut is going to calibrate how far to cut and it's going to use these black lines to make sure that it cuts exactly around my cute little white image to make my image um, perfect for what I need. So we're gonna go put some white cardstock or whatever you're planning to use in your printer. We're going to print, then cut. I'm sending it to my printer and it's gonna say, wait, 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 before you do that, go ahead and connect your machine. So do that. Um, whether you've got Bluetooth going or you have to plug in the wire to your computer, um, it's sending it to my printer right there. I'm telling it how many copies. Sometimes it asks you to add bleed and that is not a step that we need for this. Use system dialog. I have no idea what that means, but I've never used it, so it's surely fine. All right, we're going to print. It's going to my printer. And at this point, I've made sure that my printer is turned on and also my little home laminator. I turn it on because I like to laminate my images before I cut them out. So that opens a whole new can of worms. Let me tell you about that. I use this little home laminator that has three mil pouches, so it's pretty thick and sturdy. So when I go to set my base material, the default is medium cardstock 80 pounds. That is not going to literally cut it for me. So I had to make my own material type. They have one that's heavy cardstock at 100 pounds, but that one did not cut through for me. I tried that one. It didn't work. So I made my own material that I named laminated cardstock three times. That means it's going to cut it three times for me. I found those settings by clicking on browse all materials. And again, I'm about to show you that. But before I do, on pressure, if you're cut, cutting with laminating, you're going to want to choose more probably. So it's got a nice extra firm pressure. Okay, so print your little picture out. Go ahead and laminate it. And then you're searching for that new material type. Choose heavy cardstock, 100 pounds. You're going to click this little star. And then you're going to edit it. All right, once you clicked it and opened it up, you're going to want to change this from 100 to maybe 299. I had to make mine 305 to get a really good cut. And at first I tried two times cut and later I changed it to three times. But let me show you over here. Okay, it's going to look something like this. There's your choice that you made. You're going to use this toggle or use the plus minus to change it to 305. Play around with that and see what your Cricut needs to make a good clean cut. At first, I made it 2x and I went back and needed 3x. Oh my stars, I did it again. Okay, guys, sorry about that. Hello, where are we? All right. So, um, 
then you're going to scroll after you get this all fixed like you want it you're going to save it you're going to scroll down and you're going to add new material this is way at the bottom you're going to scroll a bit and you're going to rename it all right and i just named it laminated cardstock two times so you're going to save it and now that choice is going to be up at the top every single time just like mine was all right, make sure that you had that cutting pressure to more. And from here on out, Cricut is just going to give you directions. It's going to tell you exactly what to do. And you just follow what it tells you and look at your machine and see where it's blinking. If it's blinking, click it. All right, one last page. Again, I laminate my graphics and my letters with that little scotch laminator that uses the three mole pouches. They are very thick, so I needed three times of cutting. Um, don't remove the mat between the cutting rotations. Just stick your mat in there under the little clips like it shows you. Um, when you put it down, ignore the lamination. If you're doing it like me, line up this white edge and this white edge with your grid lines, okay? And I do use my little scooter thing to scoot all the bubbles out. I know that's probably got a real name, but it's scooter thing in my house. Okay, so Cricut Cutter is doing its thing follow whatever it lights up and tells you to do and then just keep repeating repeating keep an eye on it so that it, the mat stays good and steady when it's gone through its third cutting rotation you're going to peel the lamination away from your object or sometimes peel the mat away from it whichever direction you want to go you might have to use the spatula to scooch it off the mat just a little bit and guys, when it's all said and done, you may still have to get your scissors out and snip just a little bit to make it perfect. But that is how Miss That Library Girl, the Cricut newbie, has learned to use my cutting machine to cut out bulletin board materials. I sure hope that helped you. If you have more questions, send me a comment. Thanks, guys.